Hello, are you prepping for the Praxis General Science exam? My name is Derek Masiaga. I'm a science educator with study.com and today I'm going to walk you through some example mechanics problems in this video. Let's go ahead and take a look. Question 1. What direction does the acceleration point toward for an object experiencing circular motion? A. Towards the center of the circle. B. In the direction the object is moving. C, in the opposite direction that the object is going. D, towards the center of the earth. So we need to kind of visualize an object experiencing circular motion. And so I'm gonna go with the earth and the moon, okay? Because I know that the moon travels in an orbit around the earth. And the reason for that is because of earth's gravity, right? Earth's gravity is constantly pulling the moon towards itself. And so because of that force of gravity causing the moon to go in a circle, we see that the net force on the moon is towards the earth, okay? And so according to Newton's second law, where the net force is pointed is where the object is going to accelerate. And so because the net force points towards the center of the moon's path at every single point, we know that the acceleration is also going to point towards the center of, the circ of that circular path. So the correct answer here is answer A, towards the center of the circle. Question two, the speed of a bullet is measured using a ballistic pendulum. If the bullet is completely lodged inside the pendulum after collision, which of the following statements is true? A, both kinetic energy and momentum are conserved. B, neither kinetic energy nor momentum is conserved. C, only kinetic energy is conserved. D, only momentum is conserved. So the term conserved here is like our laws of conservation, right? We have the law of conservation of energy and we have the law of conservation of momentum. And so they're, they're testing our knowledge here of uh, what is going to be conserved when the bullet gets lodged inside of the pendulum. Whenever we have a collision, we know that the law of conservation of momentum is going to be conserved. So I know that momentum is going to be conserved because of the collision that is happening. Now I need to evaluate, is the energy going to be conserved here? And they're talking specifically about the kinetic energy. Well, because the bullet gets lodged inside of the pendulum, we are now changing the mass of the object. It went from being a singular bullet and a singular pendulum to now they are combined as one object. And because they've gone from two separate objects to one combined object, that kinetic energy of the bullet will not be conserved. And so the correct answer here is that only the momentum is going to be conserved. Question three, what is the final velocity of a box with mass 12 kilograms if it is being pushed 20 meters across the floor by a force of 14 newtons? A, 11 meters per second, B, seven meters per second, C, eight meters per second, or D, six meters per second? All right, so what they're testing us here is our knowledge of the work energy theorem, where uh, work is equal to the force times the distance. And in this case, they wanna know the velocity, which is the energy component, and velocity is one half mv squared. All right, so we just need to plug in the values uh, from the problem. So mass was 12 kilograms, the distance was 21 meters, and our force was 14 newtons. They're asking us, what is the final velocity? So force was 14, distance was 21, the mass was 12, and we don't know what the velocity is. So that's our problem set up. Now remember, for the science test, you will not be able to use a calculator. You're gonna to have to do some mental math here. So I'm gonna do mental math 14 times 20. Um, 
because uh, I know that 14 times 10 is 140, and then I can double that to 280, and then I can add a 14 to that. So 280 plus 14 gives me um, 294. Half of 12 is six. So we are at 294 equals six times V squared. And I know I need to divide by six on both sides. I'm looking at 294 here. And if I actually add six to that, I get 300. And I know that 300 divided by six is gonna give me 50. But if I take away one of those sixes that I initially added to get to 300, I know that I'm gonna, that's gonna end up being 49. So six goes into 294, 49 times. That's gonna equal V squared. And so all I have to do now is square root. I know that the square root of 49 is seven. So the correct answer here is going to be seven meters per second. Question four, what must be the angle between the barrel of a cannon and the ground for a cannonball to reach the farthest horizontal distance? A, 45 degrees, B, zero degrees, C, 30 degrees, or D, 60 degrees? And the correct answer here is going to be option A, 45 degrees. 45 degrees is the halfway point between a 90 degree angle. And so 45 is the best because it gives us equal parts of the vertical component and the horizontal component. And that is gonna allow us to get the farthest horizontal distance. Anything below 45 degrees, that projectile is gonna, is gonna kind of come up a little bit short, okay? Anything above 45 degrees, that projectile is gonna go higher than far, okay? And so 45, this 45 degrees is gonna give us the furthest distance. I hope this video was helpful. If you're looking for more ways to study, check out our other videos and then also make your way over to study.com to check out our Praxis test prep courses. As a study.com member, you'll get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones I just walked you through, plus targeted instruction for any topics that you're still struggling with, as well as test strategy to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we wanna hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful and let us know down below in the comments if there are any specific topics you want us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying.